Alrighty, welcome back to another video. Uh, today we are looking at this R150 gearbox. Uh, so in my Cresta I've got an R154. Uh, not the strongest gearbox, uh, still pretty expensive. Uh, this is an R150, it is out of a two-wheel drive ute. This is the most common one here, this is in Australia, as you can probably tell from my accent. But this particular one is the most popular. It's, a, a, it's either an R150 or an R151, there's not a great deal of difference. Uh, it's two-wheel drive, so when the casings are on, there's no four-wheel drive transfer case on the back. Uh, so what this is here, like this is the intermediate plate. These are all the gears. This is the output shaft, or sorry, the input shaft, uh, whereby your bell housing goes here, and this engages the clutch. And we'll talk about more of this in a moment. <clears throat> uh, that's your output shaft where your tail shaft would slide on. This is the back of the casing and uh, your shifter goes up here, etc, etc. All that stuff's out the back. The reason why I've got it pulled apart uh, is because... Uh, so this is an R154 input shaft. And if I put it side by side next to this... Uh, very abundant gearbox the input shaft is too short now the reason why I can't use this one is see this gear here behind the bearing it's too big uh, because of the gear ratios that are different between the R154 and the R150 so R154 essentially has the perfect gearing for a 1JZ, 2JZ. Uh, I, in fact, went down to a 4.3 diff ratio with my R154, and for me on the street, that's perfect. Uh, this I'm doing for my stepson, uh, Ollie. He's got a Sora. Uh, it's just 2JNA, but... Uh, here in Australia, he can't drive a turbo engine until he has his open license, which is in a couple of years' time. Now, <clears throat> uh, what I'm going to do, because his car is auto at the moment, so it has quite a high diff ratio, like a 3.7 or a 3.9. So, the because this is out of a two-wheel drive ute, it has a very short first gear, a very sh reasonably short second gear, and also a reasonably short third gear in comparison to the R154. So we're gonna keep the higher diff ratio, and I, I don't think it'll be too bad. Um, my mate has the same gearbox in his car, and I we did the same thing that I'm doing here, although I got the gearbox shop to do it, um, <clears throat> so what we have is we actually have, so this was the R154 input shaft. This is another R150 or R150 input shaft, but this is from, well, actually this one came from America, but there's a V6 gear two wheel drive Hilux. And they come with the longer input shaft and the correct gear. So basically everything about this is identical apart from the length of the input shaft. And in fact, the way you can tell is, uh, okay, I thought it was this bulge on here, but this has got the bulge. So actually they've both got the bulge. I'll just put this down but it's got a bulge and then it's got a large space before the spline, whereas this has a bulge and it has a small space before the spline, okay? This one is called 160 millimeter input shaft. This one and the R154 
are 190 millimeters. So if you're looking at a two wheel drive R150 or R151 gearbox, you can measure the length of the input shaft. Let me get a ruler. So where does it measure to? Yeah, okay. So this one measures 150. Um, you would actually have a bit of a bell housing here. Uh, so it's about 140. Don't know why they call it a 160, but that's what they call it. And then they call this one a 190. And yeah, so this one's about, if you move it up, it's about 175 to 180 millimeters. So 180 versus 150. Okay, uh, so you can do this yourself. The reason why I haven't gotten any further is I need some heavy duty uh, snap ring pliers for this snap ring here. And there is a snap ring here on this bearing. See the snap ring? Uh, there bit hard looking through the camera there we go just there snap ring okay so i need to get those off and then you need a puller uh i believe might be to pull this gear off yeah it's this gear so you need a puller that threads in and you pull this gear off uh and then i think the tricky part Tricky part may be getting that gear off or it might even be this gear, although that looks like it's part of the shaft. But either way, you need a gear puller for one of them. And then I've got a press and then you use a bearing separator. But what I was gonna say is to get to this point, I've literally used a 14 mil socket, a 10 mil socket, two screwdrivers and a hammer and a rag to catch the little rings. So here's the bits and pieces. Uh, these are, so I've labeled them, you know, second gear. Well, here's, here's some of the bits. So these are the shift forks. Um, people actually upgrade these and I've got upgraded ones in my R154. You get them from Marlin Crawler. And if you do pull it apart, you just check on this surface here for any wear. Um, they can break, although the gearbox guy, when I did it, he just said, no, you're better off just getting the billet ones because they're harder. And I I only got, I think it was these two. So the one, two shift fork and the three, four shift fork. So these were the ones that I got for mine. Uh, this is a bit different to R154 because I don't see a third, four, fifth, uh, shift fork that might be that metal thing there but i thought that was the reverse fork so anyway you can buy those uh and there's there's two major upgrades if you well there's three the third one is the shift forks but the two most important is there is a thrust washer in here somewhere uh and it is just a pressed piece of metal and when you're beating on the gearbox hard it will uh, basically break into pieces. So Marlin Crawler sell the, the uh, Crow Molly thrust washer. That is one upgrade. And then it might even be this plate here. So this is the bearing retainer plate. And on my R154, uh, I think back in my uh, how to diesel convert a jzx or lx to jzx um i think i showed this but when you take this bearing retainer plate off uh because this is only a pressed piece of steel it bows and so if you can imagine these two shafts here and that plate uh it causes misalignment from the shafts and the second and third gears which I'm guessing are these two. That's just a guess, please don't roast me. Um, but they they will like wipe the teeth off here or you get a miss, bit of misalignment because the 
uh, the, the, the counter shaft and the main shaft misalign. So uh, to get to this point, I used the factory service manual for R154. Because this is an R150, it's a little bit different, but you just follow the procedure. Now, there are some good videos on YouTube as well of people stripping down uh, mainly W58s, which is a very similar but weaker, again, gearbox. You could use one of those on a naturally aspirated uh, JZ. Um, but yeah, so videos on YouTube and this is in fact the Toyota Supra, I think, uh, service manual. Doesn't actually say, but I printed out the whole thing. See, this this might even be for W50, well, yeah, it says W58 R154. So there it gives you the ratios. Um, if you want to know what the ratios are, well, here, there's, there's the R154 ratios there. Uh, if you want to know what R150 is, just look on Wikipedia uh, because they've got all the ratios there. Um, so that's about it. I just wanted to show this. Um, I happened to buy this input shaft. I saw somebody selling it one day. And there was a rumor that the R154, you could just stick it in an R150. Um, so I bought it pretty cheap, but turns out you can't. Um, so we were very lucky. We found a guy selling one that's used, but it's in really good condition. Uh, so we found this for sale uh, on eBay, but you can actually buy these from Toyota. They're about $300 Australian. Um, you know, we probably could have got a new one cheaper because that's about 50 cents uh, in US dollars. Um, but yeah, there you go. That's the R154. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I need to get the I need to get these pliers to get these bearings off, and I don't have the right puller, and I might might get some help after this. But the rest of the stuff, pulling out the shift forks. Um, you know, I've just bagged up all these. I think I explained that. Uh, these little doodads, where'd they go? These guys, the shift pills. These little things, you haven't to lose these. Uh, so they're like a, they're what the, these indents on the shift rails uh, bump into, etc. Uh, but as long as you label everything and you take your time, it's it's literally like you just follow the procedure. So if that was helpful, leave us a like. Um, subscribe because it's a massive help. And, you know, you, you know you want to see more of my uh, high-tech videos. And uh, thanks for watching. R150, R151.